Okay, folks, the second concept we'd like to talk about uh, from Chapter 2, just to finish up uh, what we discussed in class, is the idea of trade-offs. Trade-offs. This is going to build on our conversation about production possibility frontiers and allow us to begin to consider what the firm has to think about in their planning with respect to uh, production. And again, in that production possibilities frontier, that line defined for us the potential that the firm has to manufacture products. And in our restricted analysis, we're assuming that they have uh, the opportunity to produce um, one or both of two goods. And in our previous example, we suggested that they could make cars you got to get my line here, uh, or trucks, okay? And in fact, when we looked at this before, we suggested that if the company used all its available resources to produce cars, it could make 100 of them. If it used all of its available resources, it could produce, uh, excuse me, 60 cars or 100 trucks. And those are the X and Y intercepts that we see for this production possibility frontier. Now, <clears throat> in the case of trade-offs, what we're really asking is, if the firm was producing, let's say uh, they were producing all cars, they'd be making 60 cars and zero trucks. If they chose to produce more trucks, in other words, if they chose uh, on their production opportunity scale here to produce more trucks, Given the fact that <laughs> they operate in scarcity, the only way they can do that is by choosing to take some of the resources previously allocated to cars and allocate them to trucks. And so we end up with a situation that the choice to make more trucks is allowable, but given they operate in resource scarcity, that can only be done by giving up the opportunity to make cars. And in fact, we can see just how many cars they'll have to give up to make trucks because whatever the change in X is as we move along the X axis, whatever the change of X is, Y has to decrease at a rate defined by that production possibility frontier. And of course, we know what we're talking about here. We're looking at how Y changes with respect to X changes in X, and that's going to be the slope of the PPF. And in fact, that slope is going to represent <coughs> the choice I make to substitute trucks for cars, or the opportunity cost of trucks in terms of cars. Okay? So in this case, if we look at this particular production possibility frontier, we can see that if, in fact, across the whole line, the firm chose to go from making all cars and no trucks to all trucks and no cars, they would have to decrease their production of cars by 60. They would have to go from 60 to zero. And at the very same time, that would allow them to now make 100 trucks. In other words, the slope of that line would be negative 0.6. It also tells us that the opportunity cost for this manufacturer is 6 tenths of a car to make 
one truck. As they move one unit along the x-axis, they're moving 0.6 units down the y-axis to maintain that slope. The slope of the line, therefore, is the opportunity cost that the firm is confronted in terms of moving more to truck production from cars. Note also <coughs> that in order to go the other way, the inverse of that, the inverse of negative 0.6, would represent the opportunity cost of making cars in exchange for trucks. Because in order to move this way, in order to move up in terms of Y, the firm has to move to the left in terms of X. And that's the inverse of the slope. And so we can see that the rate of trade-off, how we have to trade off cars for trucks, is going to be defined simply by the slope of this production possibility frontier. The rate at which y changes with a corresponding change in x, or the rate at which x must change for a corresponding change in y. Slope of the line, if we're looking at additional production along the x-axis. Inverse of the slope, if we're looking at additional production along the y-axis.